Hello everyone. In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the Python programming language. This video assumes that you have Python installed on your machine and you have a text editor of your choice that you can use to edit that Python code. For this video, I'll be using Visual Studio Code or VS Code. This is what VS Code looks like. I'll show you how you can run your Python code in VS Code and also how you can run your Python code from command line. So for that, you'll need a terminal or a PowerShell or whatever your favorite version of command line is. So let's get started by first making a directory in which we can put our Python scripts. I'm going to put this directory on my desktop. You can put it wherever you would like. So I'm going to make a new folder called Python Basics Fun, in which we'll start going through some basics of Python. The basics that we'll cover in this video include comments, variables, and operators. Throughout the demo, I'll be using the print statement, but stay tuned for a future video where I'll go through some more details on how to get the most out of using print and also how to get input from the user. So that'll be a input output video. Now let's head over to VS code and open this folder. So a few ways to do it in the file explorer on the left side here, you can do open folder under get started. If you see this kind of welcome page, you can click open or you can go file open folder. I'm going to navigate to my desktop, open Python basics fun. This will reload VS Code. Now the current working directory, also known as the CWD, is Python Basics Fun in VS Code. So if you look in my file explorer on the left-hand panel of VS Code, the top level directory that I can see is Python Basics Fun. Anything that I create in this instance of VS Code will be created in Python Basics Fun. So let's create our first Python file. Python files have the .py extension. For the base file name, we can name it really whatever we want. I'll use main as the name of our first script. So let's do new file, the little new file icon right here, or new file right here, and name our new file main.py. This will open main.py in the text editor. And now we can start writing some Python code. Sticking with tradition, let's write print hello world. Often when getting started with a new programming language or a new environment, you try to get what's called a hello world up and running, which is a very simple program that just prints hello world to the console or the command line. In VS Code, whenever you have unsaved changes, you'll see a black circle where the X normally is. So let's make sure that we save this file Use your keyboard shortcut, control S or command S for Windows or Mac, or you can always go file, save. Now we're ready to try running our simple main.py. So let me show you two ways to do this. One is in VS Code. If you have main.py open and you see a play button here, which says run Python file in the tooltip when I hover over it, you can simply run this Python file by clicking the play button and you should see hello world in the output. If you don't see the play button here, I recommend you head over to the extensions side panel and search for the Python extension and install the one from Microsoft. Then reload VS Code and try again. Another way that you can run main.py in VS Code is using the integrated terminal. If you don't see the integrated terminal, an easy way to open it up is to go view terminal and that will hide or show your terminal. To run main.py from command line at your terminal, simply type Python and then the name of your script that you want to run. So for us, that's Python main.py and you should see hello world. If you installed Python and you're getting an error here saying that Python is not recognized, perhaps you need to add Python to your environment variable, which would be your path environment variable. Please take a look at another video 
or do some research online to find a nice tutorial to show you how to do this. Now that we can run our Python file in VS Code, let me state that if you're not using VS Code and you want to run your Python file, you could simply type this same command at your Mac terminal or at your Windows PowerShell or your Windows command prompt or whatever you like to use for your command line interface. Now that we can run Python code, let's get started learning the basics of Python. So let's start on the first line of main.py with a pound sign, aka a hash tag symbol. This is a one line comment. So a comment is code, which I'm putting in double quotes, and I'll explain why, is code that Python ignores. This means it's code because it's part of a coding source file, but it's not code in that it has to adhere strictly to the Python syntax. Because Python ignores comments, we can write English sentence structure code, whatever we want to write here. So therefore, Comments are ignored by Python, but they're still part of our code base. They just don't execute. The purpose of comments is to document our code. We might use them to describe uh, something key that we're doing in the code, something non-obvious or non-trivial. We might use a comment to cite a source by pasting a URL, etc. What I'll use comments for in my videos is to document or explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So now that we've learned about comments, I can start using them to describe other aspects of Python that we're going to learn. There's another type of comment that I'd like to show you, which is called a multi-line comment or a block comment. So if we have a pair of triple double quotes, so double quote, double quote, double quote, and then enter, and then double quote, double quote, double quote, this is a multi-line comment, AKA a block comment. So with the pound sign, we only have a comment that spans one row. But if our comment is long, as is the case often when we're documenting, say, something like a function or a class, then we'll use a multi-line comment, aka a block comment, so that our comment can span multiple lines more easily. All right, let's start with our first topic section header, variables. Variables are fundamental when getting started with programming languages. A variable stores a value. A variable has a name that is convenient for us as the programmer to use when we want to refer to that value. So let's start with a simple variable declaration. Let's say we have a variable x, which is assigned 5. I highly recommend you train your brain to read this as x is assigned 5 or x stores 5. Oftentimes when we see this equal sign here, we think equality, x equals 5. That's not what this Python statement is saying. There actually is an equality operator in Python, which is two equal signs. And this is what we use to actually test if x equals 5. This here is a storage operation. We're saying put this value 5 in this variable. And if I ever want to refer to five again or override it, I'll use X to do so. So X is assigned five. Now we can access X by simply say, printing it out. We just use X. So I'll run this, get a little bit of room down here. And I see five displayed from line 16. And I still see hello world displayed from line 18. Let's talk some more about variables. A variable has a data type. The data type defines the range of values which can be stored in the variable. So let's take a look at an example. 
the int data type. So int is short for integer, which means that an int variable can store whole numbers, positive, negative, or zero. Since we assigned x five, five is a whole number, x is currently storing an integer value, we would say x is an int variable. We can confirm the type of x by using a built-in function called type. It's built in, which means we don't need to import another Python module in order to use it. So let's see what the type of x is. If I print this out, I see that x is class int, and int is short for integer. I'm going to move my hello world back up here to the top, just so that my most recent output is always going to be at the bottom. Now, let's overwrite x with a new value. Let's say that we don't want x to store 5 anymore. We want it to store 5.5, which is not a whole number and therefore is not an integer. If you're coming from another programming language where you declare the type at the time you declare a variable, you're probably like, what? I can change the type of my variable. I can say it's no longer storing an int. It's now going to store a floating point number. And yes, you can in Python. So let's see it in action. Let's say x is now assigned 5.7. I'll print out x. I'll print out the type of x. And we'll see that x is now a float. So now we're seeing another data type in Python. So float is short for floating point number. So this would be a data type that defines values that have a fractional part, or said another way, decimal numbers. So a float variable can store decimal numbers, or numbers with a fractional part. In this case, 0.7 is the fractional part. Let's assign x again. This time I'm gonna assign x what's called a string. So a string is a sequence of characters. In Python, the string data type is represented by str or str. And a string variable can store a sequence of characters. So let's print out x, and then let's print out the type of x. And there we see hello printed to the console, and we see stir, short for string. Now, let's put this all together, and let's say we assign to x 5, but not the int 5, the string 5. When I print out x, I see five, and this looks just like the output I had earlier from line number 17 when I print out x, the integer. So the output looks the same, but we know now that the value is being stored as a different type. Previously on line number 17, we're printing out x where x is storing five as an integer, and now on line 38, x is storing five, the character, as a string. So this is why type can come in handy if you're ever unsure of what the data type of your variable or a value is. All right, let's move on to our last big topic for this video, which is operators. We've covered comments, we've covered variables, now let's cover operators. Hopefully you recall PEMDAS. This is an acronym for remembering the order of operations. This order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, applies in Python as well. Plus there are some additional operators in Python beyond PEMDAS, uh, but let's start with the basics here. So parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. 
So parentheses have the highest order of precedence in this list of six different operators. So parentheses in Python are the same as you're used to from say, typing them in Word or typing them in another language or writing them in algebra. Now let's do exponentiation. So a double star is the exponentiation operator in Python. So let's say I want to raise two to the third, which would be two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is eight. So I run this and I see eight. This is a good opportunity here to see another way to do exponentiation that uses the math module. So a Python file is also known as a module and we can use standard modules that are included with Python without having to install any additional libraries or packages to do so. One of the standard modules or libraries that we can use in Python is the math module. So let's use the math module to see another way to compute an exponent. We'll need to import the math module in order to gain access to code written in the math module. So let's scroll all the way up to the top of our file and let's write import math. So by convention, you put all of your import statements at the top. You don't have to do this because Python executes a module or a Python file from top to bottom. So as long as your import statement is before the line of code that uses the module you're importing, your code will compile and run just fine. But by convention, it's good to put all your import statements at the top so that it's really easy to find what dependencies or what modules are being used by this file. So at the very top, I'm gonna to import math. This is going to allow my main.py module to access code written by awesome Python developers in the math module. So let's do the same thing we did on line 47, but using the math module. So I can do math dot and I can see all of the functions and variables that we have access to from the math module. So some fun ones like seal or cosine or degrees or absolute value, floor, etc. What I'm interested in is math.pow, which will compute x to the power of y. So I'm gonna pass in two comma three and we should see the same result which we do 8.0 coming from line 51, but it's slightly different because if you see our previous result from line number 47 using the exponentiation operator, it was an integer, there's no point on the end, but the result from line 51 using the math module is a floating point number because there is a point on the end. So just something to note about the difference between these two ways of computing exponentiation, when both your operands for the exponentiation operator are ints, you'll get an int. With math.pow, even if both arguments to the pow function are integers, you'll get a floating point number. I'll mention too that what we're doing here with calling math.pow involves knowledge of functions and arguments. If you're not familiar with functions and arguments, stay tuned for another video where I'll go through the basics of them in Python. All right, let's move on now to multiplication. So a single star is multiplication. So maybe I'll print out four times five and I expect, expect to see 20, which I do. Let's move on to division. There are two types of division in Python that you should know about. The first is a single forward slash, which is floating point division. And what we think of as the normal division. 
So let me give you an example. If I were to say print two, or let's do five divided by two, okay, you would say two goes into five evenly, two times with a remainder of one, one over two is a half, so the result is two and a half. And I print this and I see two and a half. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Well, there's also an operator that is two forward slashes, which is integer division. So integer division is the whole number result of floating point division. So if we look at the result of floating point division, the whole number is two. Two goes into five evenly two times. So let's try printing out five integer divide two, and we get the result of two. Another way to think about integer division is you take the result of floating point division and you just chop off or just truncate off the fractional part, the 0.5, and what you're left with is the result. There's one more operator here worth mentioning, which is the mod operator. So the mod operator is the remainder from integer division. So if I do print five mod two, two goes into five evenly two times with remainder one, I will see one printed. So floating point division, integer division, mod, and multiplication all have the same order of precedence. You would evaluate them from left to right. I'll mention that exponents are evaluated from right to left. So that is something a little different to keep in mind. I won't do demos for addition and subtraction because I'm sure you're familiar with the plus and minus signs from your algebra days and whatnot. They work as you would expect in Python and they are truly the plus and minus signs. All right, that's a wrap up of this video. We covered commons, variables, operators, and how to run Python code in VS Code and how to run it in the terminal or at your command line. Stay tuned for the next few Python videos, which will continue with important topics when getting started with Python, like getting input from the user, conditionals, loops, functions, lists, etc. Lots to learn. Python is a great language. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing to my channel.